Hello, I'm Jillian. Thank you for joining me. Scholarly research is concerned with ensuring the rigor, integrity, trustworthiness, and legitimacy of its methodology and methods. Yet there are inherent limitations in doing so. Managing these limitations involves attending to issues of truthfulness, applicability, consistency, and neutrality. Quantitative and qualitative researchers have different ways of understanding these issues because they have different epistemological and ontological assumptions. Pause on the next two slides to see the different assumptions that underpin each methodology. In the qualitative paradigm, researchers understand truthfulness or truth value as credibility. Credibility relates to how faithfully meaning is constructed from data and how faithfully results portray what is under investigation without embellishment, exaggeration, or understatement. Applicability is understood as transferability. Because qualitative results are perspectives, concrete universals, empirical assessments, and extrapolations, they are particular to the research context, setting, and circumstances. In other words, they are not generalizable beyond the research setting, and qualitative researchers cannot make such claims. It's up to readers, therefore, to transfer results, insights, and meanings to their own contexts and situations as they identify points of resonance and connectivity. Consistency is understood as dependability. It relates to the potential for identifying similar themes and making similar inferences and conclusions should a qualitative study be repeated under comparable conditions and circumstances and in comparable settings. And neutrality is understood as confirmability. It relates to the minimization of researchers' values and biases in the collection of data and in the data itself. Both should be as free of personal values and bias as possible. I use six strategies to, minim to manage the limitations of my qualitative studies and to attend to issues of credibility, transferability, dependability, and confirmability. Those are disclosure, prolonged engagement, dense descriptions, triangulation, member checking and peer review, and audit trail and planning. Let's go through them. The first is disclosure. The methodology of qualitative studies is highly interpretive and relies on researchers' personal observations and ascribed meanings, which cannot be readily verified by others. Therefore, it's helpful for researchers to identify and declare personal biases, assumptions, perspectives, worldviews, theoretical orientations, and or experiences as they inform the lenses, filters, judgments, choices, and decisions related to every aspect of the study. Such transparency offers context and insight into how results are generated and how conclusions are drawn, increasing the study's credibility, dependability, and confirmability. Disclosure requires researchers to be self-aware and self-critical, including in recording field notes of a reflective and reflexive nature. The conceptual framework and research questions guide researchers on what is appropriate and relevant to share. Prolonged engagement. Many qualitative studies have the potential for researcher effect. This refers to how the presence of researchers in the field as outsiders and their use of research methods might alter what is under investigation. Prolonged engagement in the field or spending extended periods of time there often diminishes researcher effect as participants get used to researchers or they forget that they're there or they have difficulty maintaining a facade, thus resuming authentic conducts and behaviors. This increases the study's credibility and dependability. Prolonged engagement also enables the collection of tons of data, which increases transferability. The length of time researchers remain in the field depends on the nature and size of the field, the research purpose and questions, and the resources allocated to the study. Dense descriptions. Detail matters in qualitative studies, and data are collected with this in mind. Researchers record all that the senses can detect in the field, such as dialogue, colors, smells, room layout, actions, and reactions. 
They gather all of the relevant supporting materials they can access, for example, manuals, organizational charts, protocols, and memos, and they seek out demographic and contextual information. It's not unusual to fill several notebooks and boxes with materials. Copious data enables researchers to offer detailed and layered descriptions in addressing the research question, thus enhancing the study's credibility, transferability, and dependability. Triangulation involves collecting data from multiple sources using several researchers and or multiple methods, such as interviews, observations, and discourse and document analysis in order to gain a comprehensive understanding of what is under investigation. Comparing data from different sources enables researchers to identify consistencies and inconsistencies. Consistencies contribute to the study's credibility, dependability, and confirmability. But inconsistencies don't necessarily undermine these qualities. Rather, they can represent complex and nuanced expressions and cue scholars to areas requiring further investigation. Member checking involves seeking participants' feedback, thoughts, and opinions, particularly on early insights generated by rudimentary analysis. This helps to ensure that the researcher is interpreting and understanding data accurately and drawing reasonable conclusions. Peer review seeks the same from colleagues, but often earlier in the process and on the research design. This helps to minimize bias in the methods and ensure cohesion between the research purpose, questions, and methods so that the data that are collected will enable researchers to address the research question with integrity. Credibility and confirmability are increased when those with experience and knowledge are consulted. An audit trail is simply a detailed, reflective, reflexive, and transparent account of all research procedures, processes, judgments, choices, and decisions. This would include, for example, particulars in how the methods were enacted and for how long, what challenges the researcher faced, what changes were made on the fly and why, how effective particular methods were in generating data regarding the research questions, and how results were generated. Some of this will be pre-planned prior to entering the field. But as most fields in qualitative studies are social in nature, involving human conduct, interaction, and relationships, unexpected and unanticipated things happen that can alter best laid plans. An audit trail keeps track of and reports all of this, increasing the study's credibility and dependability. Despite these and other strategies you might know of, limitations will always exist with qualitative studies. For example, informed consent and interview questions may heighten participants' awareness of their conduct, behaviors, and practices, such that what researchers observe and the answers given to their questions may not be entirely authentic. Additionally, a single researcher minimizes the potential for inconsistencies in how methods are enacted, but risks missing alternative perspectives and insights. Multiple researchers, however, are able to gain alternative perspectives and insights, but risk inconsistency. Finally, whether the researcher decides to prioritize involvement or detachment in the field and with research participants, objectivity, the outsider's perspective, and subjectivity, the insider's perspective, are respectively compromised. It is as important to accept and openly acknowledge such limitations as it is to manage them when and where possible. Accepting, acknowledging, and managing limitations helps to ensure the rigor, integrity, trustworthiness, and legitimacy of your qualitative study, its results, claims, and conclusions. Please share your own experiences and knowledge in the comments below.